Welcome back, everyone, and here is Asia News with me, Vanessa. United Nations continues to support Timor's government in various fields. The United Nations Agency's representatives in Timor-Leste met with Timorese Prime Minister Karal Shanan Guzman to discuss the UN Agency's commitment to continue to support Timor's government in the future. To visit and congratulate the Prime Minister because on winning the elections and also our support to give our support to the past um, government budget that was passed and how the UN can continue to support the people and the government of Timor-Leste. WFP World Food Program, we are here to support the government, human development capital, in order to ensure that uh, Timor moves into a different level. Thank you. Sevimi uh, Sound International Organization for Migration, uh, about migration, safe uh, migration for Timorese who wish to go abroad, as well as border management and border security. As UN Women, we are here to support fully the goals of the Prime Minister is to bring in more women in leadership, to bring in more women in economic opportunities and to make, that, to make sure that they're safer in homes uh, and they're a larger part of the economy and leadership polls here. From Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, we would be very happy to work under the leadership of the government, of the Prime Minister and Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries to develop and build a resilient food system for better production, better nutrition, better environment and a better life leaving no one behind. Shannon reaffirmed the international agencies in the country have been supporting Timor-Leste and wanted to continue to support Timor-Leste. They have been here for such a long time. They have done so much for Timor-Leste. Since we just established the new government, they wanted us to share about what they can do in order to continue to support Timor-Leste. The United Nations Agency have been existed in Timor-Leste since 2000 and those who have just met with Shannon Guzman are the UNICEF, WFP, UNFPA, IOM, UN Women, WHO, FAO, ILO, UNDP, UNESCO, and the UNHCR. Indonesia continues to support Timor-Leste to join us then. Dr. Dorinus Manik, the ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia in Timor-Leste, said Indonesia continues to support Timor-Leste's application process to join ASEAN. Dr. Dorinus Manik expressed that in an interview during the 78th anniversary celebration of Indonesia's Independence Day at the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia in Delhi, Timor-Leste. This year, Indonesia is chair of the ASEAN, and two months ago, we hold a summit in Labuan Bajo, Indonesia. At that opportunity, it has been adopted Timor-Leste's membership roadmap to ASEAN, so this bilateral relationship continues to improve. The current member states of ASEAN bloc are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Indonesian coffee crop faces threat of El Niño dryness. Taufik Rismawan, 37-year-old, suffered a loss of half of his annual Robusta coffee beans during this year's harvest, which ended a few weeks ago due to unusually heavy rainfall since the end of last year. He now faces another impending problem, dryness from El Nino. Coffee production has dropped at least 50%. Normally for 3 hectares, we could produce 2.6 tons of green beans, and this year we only harvested 1.2 tons. The main factor was because of the high rainfall last year, end of 2022. The coffee flowers were severely damaged by rain, and it's rotten. What we are afraid is not the decline of the coffee production during the long dry season. We are afraid it dry season will kill the trees, and if that happens, we will have to wait another four years for them to be grown again. That's why we will try to come up with an irrigation plan. As most of Indonesian coffee plantations are rain-fed, sufficient water throughout the cycle is crucial. However, too much rain during the flowering stage could lead flowers to drop off before berries are formed, which leads to lower yields. Cornel Swanga, owner of Kopikina Coffee, Rosted said he has been paying high prices for coffee beans and predicted coffee beans will be rare between August to October. Coffee yields in Indonesia range between 0.7 and 1.0 metric ton per hectare, while Vietnam, the world's biggest robust supplier, produces 2.7 tons per hectare. 
Indonesia's weather agency said the El Niño weather phenomenon, which brings prolonged halt and dry weather through the tropical country, is already impacting more than two-thirds of the nation including coffee production in Java Island and parts of Sumatra. Cambodia and Chinese continue to strengthen relations in various issues. Cambodian Prime Minister Samdek Teko Hun Sen met with visiting Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Phnom Penh to discuss relations between Cambodia and China and other issues of common concern, including regional development programs. At the meeting with Wong, who is also a member of the Political Bureau of Communist Party of China's Central Committee, Hun Sen expressed his appreciation to Chinese President Xi Jinping for his great attention to the development of relationship between Cambodia and China. He said Cambodia is unwavering in its determination to consolidate and deepen the unity and friendship between the two countries. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister said the new Cambodian government will continue to further strengthen the strategic mutual trust and carry on the traditional friendship with China. The Chinese Foreign Minister said China is willing to work with the new Cambodian government to build a high-quality, high-level and high-standard China-Cambodia community with a shared future in the new era and to implement the important consensus of the leaders of the two countries. Cambodian King Norodom Siamoni met with Wang on the same day. Cambodia is the last leg of Wang's current Southeast Asia tour, which is also taking him to Singapore and Malaysia. Rescue workers search for survivors after landslide at Myanmar Jade Mine. A rescue worker and local journalist state at least 36 people were feared dead at the Jade Mine in northern Myanmar after being swept into a lake by a huge landslide. The accident happened on Sunday, August 13, in the remote town of Pakant, the center of Myanmar's secretive jade industry. Where scavengers risked their lives, picking through unstable earth and rubble excavated by mining company, searching for small pieces of semi-precious stone. More than 100 rescue workers were looking for survivors. A member of the rescue team said by phone, declining to be identified due to safety concern, eight people were injured and taken to hospital. Cambodia and China vows to enhance comprehensive strategic partnership of cooperation. Cambodian Prime Minister designated Hun Manet met with visiting Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Phnom Penh with two sides pledging to promote China Cambodian comprehensive strategic partnership of cooperation. Hun Manet said the realization of peace and stability in Cambodia has benefited from China's strong support and the rapid development it has achieved in the separate world from China's selfless help. He thanked China for attaching great importance to promoting Cambodia-China comprehensive strategic partnership of cooperation. Hun Manet added, the new government of Cambodia will maintain the continuity and stability of its domestic and foreign policies in accordance with the major policies formulated by the ruling part, unswervingly develop the friendship with China and consistently carry forward the traditional friendship between Cambodia and China. Wong said, facts have proved that Cambodia's friendly policy toward China is fully in line with Cambodia's fundamental and long-term interests. The two sides should strengthen and exchanges and experience sharing in state governance, promote law enforcement and security cooperation, ensures the success of China Cambodia Friendship Year, series of activities, expand exchanges in culture, youth and sister cities between the two countries, and further consolidate public support for China Cambodia Friendship. Chinese Foreign Minister visits Malaysia to deepen bilateral cooperation. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi visited Malaysia, where he met with Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and Malaysian Minister of Foreign Affairs Zamri Abdul Qadir, bolstering bilateral cooperation between the two countries and solidifying progress in economic, trade, investment, cultural, tourism partnerships between the two nations. The visit uh, by Minister Wang Yi it's of course very significant, not only because he's just party minister, but he's also a senior member of the Holy Borough. Uh, secondly, uh, we have attached a very strong personal uh, bond and friendship. Uh, that makes things uh, rather easy for us to exchange either privately, especially, and also bilaterally with the senior uh, ministers from Malaysia. Chinese companies are welcome to expand investment in Malaysia and Malaysia stands ready to deepen cooperation with China in various fields to achieve mutual benefit and win-win results, Anwar added.
Wong said Chinese trade to work with Malaysia to maintain the sound and strong development momentum of bilateral relations, bring more benefits to the two people, and make new contributions to regional development and revitalization. While some said the two countries have enjoyed strong and close relations and witnessed substantial progress in practical cooperation. Malaysia will continue to support and actively participate in the joint construction of the Belt and Road, make every effort to promote key cooperation projects, and look forward to strengthening ties in all fields and at all levels to expand mutually beneficial cooperation. Rescuers find four Australian surfers missing off Indonesian coast. The father of one of the surfers said four Australian surfers have been found alive after the boat went missing in bad weather off the coast of Indonesia's Aceh province. Television footage showed Peter Foote, the father of one of the Australian surfers, reading a text from his son, Hey Dad, Elliot here, I'm alive, safe, now, love you, chat later. Foote told reporters he wanted his son and friends to finish the remainder of their holiday. Oh, if he calls me, uh, yeah, I'll just say, you know, love you mate. Thank God you're all right, and um, you know, whatever, you know, don't do that again. <laughs> whatever, yeah, no, it's uh, it's good, yeah. What a scare he's put me through, though. But um, you know, and lots of people, all his family, all his relatives, you know, they're all. Well, I'll have to get on now and let them all know, you know, make their day. No, no, I want him to finish his holiday. You know, I'm sure they're all fine there. Um, if the surf's great and the weather's come good and they're having a great time and they're with their best mates, you know, there's no point in him coming home. <laughs> Authorities said, however, one of the three Indonesian crew members still missing. According to the Indonesia's National Rescue Agency, the seven were aboard a three-meter or 30-feet wooden vessel traveling from Nias Island to Aceh province, Banyak Islands, when they were separated from a second vessel during a bad weather around 6 p.m. Indonesia's National Rescue Agency has dispatched a rescue team to the survivor's location. Malaysia's political bloc split victories in regional polls amid opposition games. Malaysia's ruling coalition retained control of three states in regional polls, though official results showed a conservative opposition gaining in popularity in a challenge for Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. The election in six Malaysian states, such as Selangor, Penang, Negeri Sembilan, Kelantan, Terengganu, and Kera, will not directly impact Anwar's two-third majority in parliament, but was widely seen as a referendum on his nine-month-old coalition government. Data from the election committee showed Anwar's progressive multi-ethnic alliance had been re-elected in three of the states it had held prior to Saturday's vote, including Malaysia's wealthiest state, Selangor, which surrounds the capital of Kuala Lumpur. Perikata Nasional, the opposition bloc led by former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin and backed by a conservative Islamist party, also held the three states under its control while building on inroads it had made among the country's majority ethnic Malay Muslims. Since coming to power, Anwar has focused on introducing economic and institutional reforms, including reducing subsidies for the wealthy, easing listing rules for companies, and abolishing the mandatory debt penalty. Critics, however, have raised concerns over increasing government scrutiny on online content and growing intolerance against the country's LGBTQ community. Anwar has said LGBTQ rights will not be recognized by his administration. Japanese experts are just government to reflect on war crimes. An expert before the 78th anniversary of Japan's surrender on August 15, 1945 said the Japanese government should reflect on the war crimes it committed in China during World War II and clarify its responsibilities to give Chinese victims fair treatment. <laughs> I noticed that the JSOH claimed it suffered a lot in the cruel war, but it didn't reflect on the fact that it was an accomplice in the war. So I started to investigate and raised my question. This was the start of my investigation into war crimes in medicine. At least 3,000 people were used for human experiments by Unit 731, and more than 300,000 people in China were killed by Japan's biological weapons. The Japanese government has tried to cover it up for the World War II war criminals. Before Japan made the unconditional surrender in 1945, Unit 731 blew up the labs and prisons, killed all the prisoners, and burned the bodies. Shimizu Hideo was assigned to destroy the evidence in order to keep the secrets. Nishiyama found many medical experts back then participated in those experiments. Their publications contain expressions like, monkeys reported headache. 
Many attendees were shocked at the cruelty and outrageous acts of Unit 731, the voice support to Nishiyama's investigation. And that's the end for today, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. We will see you soon.